<laughs> Will the circle be broken by and by? I said, will the circle be unbroken? Bye and bye, bye and bye. <laughs> yes, 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 it will be. The circle will be broken. You know, I told y'all before, I, I shared a story with you about a minister that chases his son. His son is trans, okay? And he grew up in the house with a mother and a father. And his father is a minister. And the young man uh, likes girl clothes, okay? It started off when he was small. His father thought he could beat him out of it, and now he's a grown man, okay? And so... His father spends a lot of his time. Now, this is a minister, mind you, chasing this young man. If he he look, he goes down the street looking for him. If he sees him on a bus stop, he pull his car over, jump out, and chase his son. Got his son running through the streets of Milwaukee, trying to um, get away from his ass. Okay. Because he knows that his father is extremely homophobic. His father is very upset that his son is uh, in the same gender-loving relationship. And he basically can't take it. Um, and I really want to know. Uh, this is the church people now. Because to me, in my opinion, they seem to be the most homophobic. The people that have some kind of a bunch of uh, religious background. Uh, and what I think is really devastating about that is the way they cap lie. I mean, you know, on otherwise, they, how they how they attack other people is really how they they be attacked and they don't understand it. That's what it means by you reap what you sow. But anyway, the, t the 2015 movie Spotlight had a profound lasting impact worldwide, not only because it was a finely made motion picture that spoke about the long-standing issue of child sexuality, child sexual abuse by the church, but also for the manner in which it was highlighted, the fact that the church and the whole organizational system of Christian authorities go to elaborate lengths to deny, hide, hush up the crimes and take great measures to shelter and rehabilitate the guilty priests, which you can't do. In one powerful scene, Mitchell Garabedin tells the journalist Michael Rendivis, if it takes a village to raise a child, then it takes a village to abuse one. He was, of course, referring to the deeply rooted system of the clergy lawyers, and private patrons, including government officials who go through great lengths to cover up the crimes and help the guilty go unpunished. Uh, does that leave you a lot of hope in the situation with Donald Trump? See, because this is the narcissist playbook to deny, uh, to hide, to project, and this is what goes on in the church and all these institutions that I say that narcissists slickly are woven into the cracks of. India, by the way, sadly, has not been immune to the plague either. Christian priests and churches, like most cases worldwide, have been targeting the poor, destitute for their crimes, and the cases go unnoticed. At most a case grabs a little uh, spot in the newspapers for a day or two, and then it's lost in obscurity. It is mostly due to the speed and reachability and digital and social media that nowadays more and more cases are coming to the light. Even, with, even if there are many, many cases, none of them get the media attention or the outrage. 
They don't. For instance, recently in Valampuda, Andra Pradesh, a 45-year-old pastor, was booked for brutally raping an 11-year-old girl. In July, uh, Father Seiji Joseph, a priest who was a director of the children's home in Carroll Whalen District, was arrested after allegations of sexually abusing minor boys. In 2013, an illegal shelter home housing dozens and dozens of children from extremely poor families in northern Eastern India, in northern eastern India, was reported in Jayapur. One girl had accused the priest Jacob John of rape, and as many as 13 girls were suspected to have been sexually abused by the priest. The children were all found to be living in a cramp in cramp rooms amongst rotten vegetables and in utterly unhygienic environment. There was also a case of a heartbreaking, I mean, it was a heartbreaking case that had come to light when a local church priest had set a minor girl on fire after sexually abusing for over a year. The girl succumbed to her injuries after suffering 90% burns over her body. In 2010, a priest named Habib Joseph was arrested for allegedly sexual abuse of a minor. The sister of the minor girl had died in the same institution a year earlier. Sound like Kana Synthorex Symphone and his brother, Synthorex Symphone. Both of them made the sad mistake of encountering Jeffrey Dahmer. The girl allegedly... The girl alleged that she and her sister were both being sexually abused regularly and that this was known to the nuns in charge of the girl. The girl's elder sister had died allegedly after being raped by the priest and beaten by the nun. Habib Joseph was granted bail within a day. Now, what the hell really going on? Kind of make you wonder about the CPS system um, as it stands. I can tell you right now, unhypocritically, there was never any uh, play like that when we were involved with housing children. If anything, we had the compassion that it took to be involved with children like that. There are some people that don't need to be around kids because they are rape them. Okay? And this is what I'm saying about... Now, what do you think happens to all these damaged children? Regardless of the, uh, the geometrics that separate us. I mean, this is almost a precursor to them growing up very angry, very uh, full of uh, just hatred because nobody speaks for them. And for a family struggling with poverty, an institution that provides free shelter and education comes as a blessing. And they are often swayed by influential tactics of pianist image of the priest. There's no difference here. There's no difference. This is worldwide. Trafficking children, slavery is still taking place. And I'm saying we got the nerve to have people right here, right now in this day and age, instead of protecting people, instead of trying to find out, even if they they own, they running them up and down the street, chasing them, so they can humiliate them and beat them and put them down even further than they already are. Oh, this is this is insane. You know, nothing can be better a better example of the inactivity of law and the disregard shown by the church authorities than the sordid tale of Paul Henry Dean, a fugitive from Australia who came to India and started working as Brother Allen and sometimes as Father Paul. See, that's why when they ask us be in Africa talking about um, a mission, 
they on a mission. Like the man, I knew a, 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 a white guy named Dave who was um, uh, uh, so excited about his son being able to go over to Africa as a missionary. And this guy named Dave allegedly molested one of his students or a student that he had, a, a, a child that he had encountered while he was in school. And today they are lovers. That kind of abuse, I ain't down with that kind of abuse. But it happens. It happens in both sexes. I knew a teacher that had sex with his middle school student. And then when she got 18, he married her. Okay? So I think that there's so much hidden dynamics involved with sexuality that we need to really get up off of it. And if we're going to deal with it, we got to start dealing with it right from the church level. Right from the church level. Because who, who are the most homophobic, disrespectful people when it comes to people's sexuality and the church people? That's just my opinion, of course. And in this story, not only did Paul manage to sexually abuse countless of deaf, dumb, and mentally challenged boys for over a decade, mm -mm -mm. he was protected and facilitated with impunity by his employers. Such was the extent of the church's protection that Paul was allowed to perform cataract surgeries and limb amputations in health camps, posing as a goddamn doctor. Posing as a god darn doctor. Whenever Paul, whenever Paul was nabbed, he managed to get bail immediately, only to go to a different institution run by missionaries and continue his dastardly acts. Kind of like the police. When they get fired from one police department, they go to another and continue their dastardly acts. The saddest part of the story was almost all of his victims were disabled and from severely poor family. They never had a chance to take a stand against it. Y'all want to know why I'm bringing you this story today? Because when we do a better job of talking about sex and sexuality and stop take it you got to take it farther than you can see. Because um, there's a song that said, believe half of what you see and none of what you hear. So if you're not attacking this thing from a scientific perspective, not, God made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. If you come in from that ignorant perspective, then there's nothing nobody can do with you. And there's no information can get in because the rock is too hard. But when you want to have a decent conversation about sexuality and the uh, covering up of it, the hiding of it, uh, what's involved with ignoring these type of uh, situations, then they end up being crimes. A lot of y'all got mad at me when I talked about the Reverend James Cleveland. Because he had proclivities. Anybody who's seen James Cleveland, I don't know, a lot of y'all just listen to his music. I, I met him. I sang with him. Okay? Well, not with him personally, but when he came to the town or when he comes to the church, you know, we used to be at the Evangelistic Temple as a choir, and we'd be on stage with him. I know sweetness when I see it. I've been around it all my life, especially when it comes to church. And those were the differences of being confused. And that's why I said I'm all church and religion out. Because growing up in a mosque and then hiding that side of myself and then growing up in the church was two different dynamics that's enough to brush the stomach of a fucking brass monkey. And I mean that. So the first thing I had to do was learn to come up from up under all that dogma. Because, and see people and things for what they are. Okay? 
So now um, everybody want to act like being gay or having same sex relationship is just oh, that's just so crazy. Just how do y'all explain homorphodites? And until you give me the answer for that, and what are they supposed to do? What is your remedy for the person kill themselves? I'm sure a lot of y'all feel like that. But who are you? If God will get ordained them to live, who are you to try to put them out? You know, there's a lot of unanswered questions. And there's a lot of, like I said, covering up, hiding um, that allows people to ignore the crimes, people to ignore the behavior, and then ultimately kill transgenders and uh, uh, beat your son that's gay, that's run, you know, all they put them out the house because y'all don't want to talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me, baby. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do it. And until you do, we're going to have a freaking, freaking, freaking messed up environment like we have today. Check your own self and sweep around your own damn door before you go for somebody else. Okay? With that being said, I'm going to go because I know I'm going. I'm going a little bit too far. Because I do want to make sure I say this. Uh, um, uh, um, you know, these, these, these um, cases are not just relegated to the church and they're they're the sign of a failed justice system. And not all crimes uh, are, are specific to religion. A uh, sick trait of criminality and abuse does not discriminate between people. But it is the institutionalized protection and lack of strong justice system and the failure of society's own safeguards like the media that help to uh, and abet the crime help it to go on. One rape covered up instigates another rape to take this, a place. So this is something I want everybody to start thinking about when you start judging and pointing out and hating on people because they're different than you. That's what people said about black people. That's how you got a Henrietta Lacks. That's how you got us being um under, up under medical apartheid because people said we're different and they can't take our magic. So they treated us the way. So everybody needs somebody to dump on. Mm. Anyway, if you like what you hear, please like, subscribe, and share the channel. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next video, people. Have a good day.